Welcome back. In this demonstration, we are going to be practicing some of our math vocabulary and making this petal for a finished flower. This will be one-fifth of our flower when we're finished. Um, so as you start learning about fractions and doing math, you'll be able to come up with how many pieces you need to make to create the final product. Now, um, before we get started, just wanted to show you some of our fractions. This is one of the basic bases for origami. It's called the water bomb base. And if we are to open it up, we can see that there are some fractions going on here. So uh, take a minute and discuss what the different fractions you can see in here are. Good. Now that you've discussed that, um, I'll just show you that if you flip this around, it creates one of the other bases of origami called the preliminary base. Now, as you go on to making more and more complicated origami, this one being the bird base, if I unfold this, you can see a lot more complicated geometry and fractions going on. You can see that within here, there are many different uh, fractions, like this square on the inside has other smaller squares with other um, triangles on the inside, and you can see how all of that space is divided up. Okay, now, as you continue on and start making more complicated models, you can start unfolding these. This is our, uh, our typical traditional paper crane. And if you unfold this one, you can see it has quite a lot of folds to it, and it will have a much more complicated mathematical fractional pattern so that it's both symmetrical and has a lot of different shapes and fractions going on just within those smaller pieces. Okay, but today our model is very simple. We're going to be making this. You can see it on both sides and if I open it up for you, you can see our crease pattern here. We have a symmetrical model that has divided in half here and then these halves are divided into smaller sections. Okay, they're not exact fractions of this whole piece, but this section is one fourth, and this section would be one fourth of the whole. All right, now to get started, you're going to need a square of paper. So start with just an A5 piece of paper. If you want to make a larger model, you can obviously use any size. And the first step is to create an origami square. You'll need to take this top edge and fold it down to meet the side edge until this, the edges are parallel. By doing this, you're going to create a right triangle. If you take your paper and fold it here, you'll have a perfect right triangle. Okay. Once you have your right triangle, cut this bottom section off. and you can use it for something else if you'd like or you can recycle it and now you'll see that we have our first fraction after you've got this fraction fold your paper so that the crease is pointing towards you and the open part is facing away from you now take the right corner and fold it up to the top corner like so by doing this you're uh, dividing this right section in half and you're creating one triangle here and essentially another triangle right here. Now do the same thing because most of origami has to do with symmetry as well as fractions and take this corner here and bring it up to the top and fold it like that. Now you have your model with these two parts and those two parts. And you, if I unfold this real quick you'll see we've taken our whole model and divided it into fourths first and now we're taking one of the fourths and dividing it in half and the other fourth and dividing it in half again. Okay, now we're going to do a little trick here. You're going to take this flap and bring it straight up and stick your finger inside here to separate the flap of paper and you're going to take this edge here that's pointing up in the air and you're going to bring it down right along this 
line here that's underneath that pocket. So if I do that, it's called a squash fold, and it will look something like this. It will have a kite shape divided in half here with this crease running down the center. If I just flip this up, you can kind of see how those two lines line up there. Okay? Now repeat that step on the left hand side. Bring your flap up, separate it with your finger, and squash it down to make that kite shape so that this crease lines up perfectly with the crease underneath. Okay, now if you can imagine, or you can flip your paper up and see that right underneath here is a line dividing this kite shape into two sections, this triangle here and this triangle here. You're going to take this tip of paper and fold it back right along this edge so you're creating a valley fold and lining it up just like this. Crease that fold so it looks like that. Then if you take the same side here, fold this one back exactly the same way so it lines up with and is parallel with this left edge like that. It should look something like this. Okay. Then the last step is to just bring these two sides together and make it three-dimensional like this. You're going to bring these two sides in first and this side here in to meet that side. and then you're going to bring the whole model together. So I'm just going to take this whole model and gently curve it together so that it looks like this. Okay, so you should have three of these piston in here and then the pedal on the outside. Now, in your class you can take these two pieces and glue them together or tape them together, whatever your teacher is asking you to do. And this forms one-fifth of the entire flower. So you can see if I have one how many more will you need? And that concludes how to build a flower as well as some mathematical vocabulary.